Hello, I'm Nina Hossein. Two and a half years ago, Mark Duggan was shot dead by police. Today, an inquest concluded that killing was lawful. His death sparked riots across London and beyond. Today's findings sparked angry scenes both inside and outside the Royal Courts of Justice, including a crowd shouting obscenities at the police. From there, our senior correspondent Ronke Phillips reports. The family's anger erupted as soon as the verdict of lawful killing was announced and continued as they emerged from the High Court. The majority of people in this country know that Mark was executed. He was executed and we still believe that and we're going to fight until we have no breath in our body for justice for Mark, for his children and for all of those of the deaths in custody that have had no, nothing for, nothing. We are not giving up. No justice, no peace. Today, we've had what we can only call a perverse judgment. The jury found that he had no gun in his hand, and yet he was gunned down. When confronting armed criminals... The anger erupted again when the Metropolitan Police attempted to make a statement. No. Armed criminals no. have shot dead more than 50... The officer all but drowned out by jeering and shouting. And we will continue working with local communities to strengthen relationships. take time. August the 4th, two years ago. Checking the start, Armed officers make a desperate but failed attempt to save the life of Mark Duggan, seconds after a member of their team had shot him twice. In the wake of the shooting, Tottenham erupted, the rioting which spread across cities up and down the country, lasting for days. In their quest to discover the truth, the jury twice visited the spot where the incident which sparked the worst disturbances ever seen in modern times began. During the 10-week hearing, they heard how the 29-year-old had got out of a minicab and was hemmed in by three armed police cars. They were shown his blood-stained jacket, recovered from the scene, and this diagram detailing the path of the two bullets fired by the officer, known only as V53. Today, the jury concluded that Mark Duggan did not have this gun when he was shot by officers, but he was lawfully killed. They also said it was likely he had thrown the gun just before he was shot. A conclusion the family reject. We've nothing to hide. We've done nothing wrong. We still fight for justice. We still want justice. We find out where we go from here. According to police, Mark Duggan was a member of the notorious Mandem gang. He'd been under police surveillance when he went to pick up a gun hidden in a shoebox from this man, Kevin Hutchinson Foster, who's currently serving a sentence for supplying the weapon. But officers didn't arrest him. Instead, they continued to follow him and 15 minutes later on Ferry Lane in Tottenham, they executed a hard stop. Seconds later, Mark Duggan was dead. Tonight, that police operation has been vindicated, but for his family and supporters, the verdict does nothing to mend relations between the community and the police. Ronke Phillips, ITV News. Well, uh, despite the police version of events and the jury's conclusion today, Mark Duggan's family claim he wasn't a gangster and that he was executed. Charlene White spoke to his aunt and his brother before today's developments about the moment they found out he'd been killed. I'd just returned home from work. So obviously the furthest thing from my mind was what I was just about to be told. And to get a phone call to say what had happened and at that time, you have to appreciate that there was a falseness going around in the media, which um, obviously you can imagine I found it very hard to get my head around. So what had you been told in that initial phone call? At that point, I'd been told that there was a shootout and um, my brother had exchanged fire with police officers. Was there a feeling of disbelief? The shock of Mark's death was overwhelming. It was unbelievable. It seemed as if it was happening to somebody else. It was just too much to bear for us. We just could not absorb that. When did you realise that something wasn't quite right with what you were being told? It never crossed my mind to be the truth in the first place. There's knowing Mark and um, how he would behave. Uh, I, I knew instantly that something was amiss there. 
And so tell us, what, what was Mark like? Is he was no gangster, that's for sure. I was a loving family man who, like I think we've said many occasions, he'd walk into a room and just brighten it up with mm. his smile. He was um, really happy-go-lucky. Even if he was down, he tried to make the most of each day. And he used to do that with his, through his humour. What was it like for you as a family to deal with the aftermath of Mark's death and read the things that people were saying about him? Before? It was, it was hard. It was very hard. The shock but, factor was terrible. But it was at the same time to be expected. We sort of expected that right. it would happen. Well, we've seen people, we've seen mm. people put in similar positions in the past and um, I think they call it a smear campaign. Smear campaign, demonising of the character. But they have to justify executing Mark. Mm. So that's how they do it. And did you ever, ever feel that you'd ever get to a situation where the feeling of mistrust that you have now towards the police, did you ever, ever believe that, that you'd reach a stage in life where that would happen? The police have a job to do, and generally, I think we can say that we have one of the best police forces in the world. But there's minorities in all organisations, all groups. So that will, always a bad apple. That will spoil it for the rest. And what was it like when you switched? I mean, I know what it was like for me when I switched on the TV the night when Tottenham just went up in flames. What was it like for you? Again, I'll use the word surreal actually being in Tottenham and all this happening just a stone throw from where I am. But something else took precedence. Mm. It's, it's something that we couldn't actually get away from and the fact that um, the two incidents are so um, closely linked. Mm. Um, I'd be watching the TV, I'd see my brother's face on the TV and then the next thing I'm mm. seeing on the TV is burning buildings and people looting. Um, obviously, it's not what we wanted. You know, Mark was dead. Tottenham's burning. We just could not make that connection whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, we tried to sort of keep the two instances apart, but... Because they were apart. How does a family even begin to rebuild after this? Things like this tear families apart. And... I'm, I'm happy in the fact that the remaining members are, you know, strong. Mm. We are strong. And finally, how would you like Mark to be remembered? As a loving father. And a normal person. Yeah. He was an average Joe. He was an ordinary guy on the street. So we'd love him to be remembered as the person who he really was, not the person who he has been trained through the media as. Mark Duggan's family talking to Charlene White there. Well, Rhea Chatterjee is in Tottenham tonight where the riots, as you will remember, of course, started. Any reaction to today's developments? Well, protests very quickly spilled over into riots here in Tottenham in 2011. That Saturday night, large parts of this area were up in flames. Tottenham became a battleground. Tonight, people are only just starting to get wind of the news of the verdict. As we know, Mark Duggan's family outside court today said the phrase, no justice, no peace. And I've seen people walking past the police station here and shouting that exact phrase. Now, in the aftermath of the riots, a spotlight was shone on the relationship between the police and the black community here in Tottenham. No doubt there will be further speculation on how today's verdict will impact upon that relationship. The shooting itself uh, garnered great feelings of mistrust and today's long-awaited verdict could deepen those feelings. Nina. Ria, thank you. Of course, the riots began after Mark Duggan's death, but in the aftermath, poverty, youth, dissatisfaction and, of course, criminality were all blamed for creating a perfect storm that unleashed chaos on the capital. So what, if anything, has changed in the areas worst affected? We asked Fully Focused, a group of youth filmmakers from Tottenham, to tell us what they think has changed. More than two years on from the largest case of mass civil unrest in modern British history, we are back in Tottenham where the unrest began. I'm standing just metres away from where Mark Duggan was fatally shot and killed by police on August 4, 2011. Tottenham is currently undergoing major regeneration and we want to find out how this is benefiting the local community. 
I've lived in Tottenham for like 30 years, and after the riots, there has been money coming into the area after regeneration, but the problem is who gets control of that? And I would say it's going to be big business and the council who are going to control what happens around here, and local people just are not getting any say on how that money should be spent or what's really needed. It shouldn't be at the expense of local commerce. It shouldn't be at the expense of local entrepreneurs. It shouldn't be at the expense of people that currently live here. Tottenham's full of a lot of great people, um, a lot of people that are willing to help, let's say youth workers especially, and we've got a great community of youth workers and despite there being no youth clubs for the past how many years, they are still there working hard. We need to bring things into the area which enhance the individuals, I mean things like apprenticeships, other things that sort of says, you know what, we're giving young people quality so that they can go into the working environment and actually be able to secure a job. It's nice to have a Costa and it's nice to have a Sainsbury's, but is that really going to benefit young people, especially in the area? I don't think so. <laughs> Another major contentious issue, specifically in Tottenham, is deaths in police custody. We're about to speak to Deborah Coles, co-founder of Inquest, to ask what impact this has. Tottenham has an extremely disturbing history of deaths in police custody, and four of the most shocking are those of Cynthia Jarrett, Joy Gardner, Roger Sylvester and Mark Duggan. The lack of accountability and justice for families following deaths in custody has had a profound impact on communities. The aftermath of the riots hasn't been purely negative. Many young people and youth organisations have used the unrest as a catalyst for positive social change, just like our organisation Fully Focused. Since the riots, I've noticed the unity of youth and youth organisations they now come together and host events and, and projects. They can push their voice now, and now they're heard. Yeah, there are a lot of positive things that happen like, within every project, and they help other young people see their positive sides. But the bad thing is that government is just cutting. Cut, cut, cuts, cuts. And what are young people meant to do if projects such as WAC, like where we are now, are getting cut? Croydon is another borough that was heavily affected by the riots. We're here to speak to Charlene, who lost everything she owned when her home was burnt down. We feel let down by the council because they were given a load of money to help the riot victims and regenerate London Road. Nothing's been done, yet they're building a shiny new Westfield building. There's been no facilities put in place for the youths around here. And all the youth centres have been closed down that were here. So there's nothing for them to do. It is clear that two years on, both young people and communities are coming together to rebuild and move on. The feeling is, however, that the government isn't doing nearly enough to support this. The views of some young people in Tottenham there. So has anything changed? We'll discuss that in a minute uh, with the MP for Tottenham, David Lammy, who joins me now. Thank you for talking to me. First of all, what is your...